Marie Burns here. I'd like to share some great news with you. We are getting close to about half of our state here in the United States that will begin to require a personal finance course in order to graduate from high school. Yay! At the same time, when I heard that recent news in the news, I'm also wondering why haven't we done this long, long ago? I'm wondering at this age in our life, who do you feel like you can or do talk with about money or financial decisions? Probably you might say a significant other if you have one, but if you don't, then who? Most of us never had formal financial education training in school. So it's no surprise then that we're uncomfortable or, or maybe just feel less knowledgeable than we wish we were about personal finance. I often hear from women that it's a subject that they, they feel can be difficult or inappropriate to talk about with like your friends. And depending on your age and circumstance, our adult children might not be the right answer either, at least not yet. <laughs> so unless you have a financial advisor, you might not feel like you have found the right person to act as a sounding board or a resource for checking backs or someone just to talk with about making some financial decisions. I know that this is the main reason that I have stayed in the financial services industry to be a financial advocate for women. I remember working in a bank and then an accounting firm, and I was sharing my frustration with the industry with my dad. And at that time I had well over 10 years of experience and he still encouraged me to hang in there and not give up. But living through the goals handed down by the employers that I knew were not in line with what I was seeing clients actually needed was really getting more and more difficult to swallow. Plus, it was a good old boy's world. So my approach to helping clients was very different than most men. <laughs> but in talking with my father, I realized I kind of felt obligated but also very passionate about using my experience, my organizational skills, and my heart for education to really stick with it and be the resource for women that I saw sorely lacking anywhere else. So then and now, I almost feel like a financial translator, kind of on a mission to help improve women's financial health. How do you feel about your financial wellness? You know, April of each year is a really great time to revisit this topic because it's actually one of the national themes, Financial Literacy Awareness Month, every April. I tend to prefer the term financial wellness because that implies a more broad and more preventive approach. After all, the more we prepare in our financial life, the less we have to repair later. No different than our health, right? The better we take care of ourselves now, the less likely we are to deal with poor health later. I actually started out as a registered dietitian many moons ago, <laughs> and I believe then, and I still do now, in a wellness, more of a preventive approach to enjoying good health, instead of the typical Band-Aid approach that our healthcare system seems to be relying on, at least for now. <laughs> so I used to help people balance their diet and exercise for a healthier life, and now, ironically, I'm helping people balance their finances instead, but it's also for a healthier life because it's all tied together, right? The more we take care of our body, the healthier we are, which costs less. So we're less likely to need to worry about running out of money, which is one of the main fears in life. And as women, I find that we have so much to offer the world. It's whether it's in a profession or in your family, or your community, or even bigger or more globally than that. But our minds are so capable of this right and left brain thinking that we can pretty well see the big picture way more often than uh, non-women. <laughs> so we're very well suited for making an impact in many, many ways. So if we could just get that money monkey off our back in order to focus on whatever it is that you are good at or passionate about, the more you can live really what you value. So I encourage you to use this April theme of Financial Literacy Awareness Month as almost a separate New Year's resolution time. 
but it's just related to money or your personal finances this time. So just like any resolution, anytime you want to make a change, we're always more successful, aren't we, if we break it down into small, doable steps. So you need to identify a step that you feel is important to you. I have a quiz that might help you to narrow it down if you want to take a look at that. And then you pick the best format for whatever action is you decide that you're going to take. We're all very different learners, different doers. Maybe you prefer to read. That's me. Some like to watch a video. That's very popular these days. Or maybe you're a hands-on. You like to attend a workshop with other people. Or you want to do it on your own and use a checklist. Or maybe listen to a podcast while you're multitasking. <laughs> My website offers all of those. You might want to check out that link. Or the Financial Awareness Foundation is another great resource for personal finance resources. Or you can certainly search online for whatever topic in the format that you're looking for. And I'm sure you'll find lots of options. I tend to think of resources as catalysts for change. But we have to also remember that the only real catalyst is us, you. If we make a priority in our life, especially with our finances, I know you can enjoy more calm and peace in your financial life, which gives you more energy to focus on what you really love to do. After all, who doesn't want less worry and more life? 